thank you very much for that uh, introduction. And what a pleasure it is to be here with all of you today. All the way from Canada, my first time in Aruba. And I have to say, you guys have it going on. I think about the uh, future of startups and with my initial impression of what is going on here in the Aruban economy, I think that the future of startups in Aruba is very, very bright. So today, um, I will be talking about the uh, future of startups. I have sort of four predictions based on what I've seen and the work that I've done at Planet Hatch with entrepreneurs like many of you in the room and where things could be going and what the future of startups could be. And you may be wondering, like, who is this baby-faced guy up here and what qualifies him to speak about the future of startups? Well, I come from a uh, small town called Fredericton, in the province of New Brunswick, in the country of Canada. And if you go pretty much due north from where we are today, past the Dominican Republic, past the eastern seaboard of the United States, you'll reach New Brunswick in Fredericton, small town of about 100,000 people, very similar in size to the island of Aruba, as I understand. And in that city, you will find our center, Planet Hatch, which is an entrepreneurship center focused on helping early stage entrepreneurs and startups grow into globally competitive companies. And the way that we do that is through programming, through facilities, through events, through funding, through coaching and mentoring. And over the six years since we opened our doors, we've helped about 240 companies start up. 80% of those companies are still in business and growing today. And they've produced, as of the end of September, 532 jobs in our small city. And as director, I have the privilege to work with these startup founders each and every day to learn about their challenges, to understand the opportunities and the ideas that they are trying to realize, and hopefully provide some support to them along the way to, to turn those dreams into reality. And so through that accumulated knowledge, I'll just share with you some of my thoughts on where I think the future of startups could be going, not only in Fredericton or Canada, but in a global sense. So before we get to the future of startups, let's think about what a startup can be defined as. And this quote by world-renowned author Steve Blank from Silicon Valley, who writes about this topic, I think is quite accurate. So a startup is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. And I want to emphasize temporary. The goal for each of you as entrepreneurs is not to start a startup. Your goal is to start a company that's going to be growing, that is going to be producing economic value, profit for yourselves and shareholders, and value for the communities that you're operating in. But it's temporary. It's one step on the entrepreneurial journey. And so if startups are temporary, when we're thinking about the future of startups, I would say we're actually talking about the future of entrepreneurship. I want to share another quote. This one's actually by my boss. Um, and he likes to say that an entrepreneur isn't always a startup but a startup is always an entrepreneur. So when we think about the large companies, the brand names that are relevant to our households, those may not necessarily, everyone in that organization may not necessarily be entrepreneurs. But for a startup with a small co-founding team, a few key hires before profitability, those are always an entrepreneur. And so when we're thinking about the future of startups, what is the future of entrepreneurship? When I say the word entrepreneur, I want you to take a moment and think of who comes to mind. Entrepreneur, is there a name or a face that comes to mind for you? Is it any of these guys? 
Anybody think of one of the faces on this slide? Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, Jack Dorsey, Mark Benioff. Show of hands, did any of these names come to mind? Yeah. So what do all these guys have in common? They are straight white males with technology-based businesses. I would posit that the future of entrepreneurship is going to look more like this. Anybody recognize any of the faces on this slide? Maybe you've heard of a company called Spanx. Be uh, Sarah Blakely in the top left-hand corner. Top right hand, an entrepreneur by the name of Emily Weiss, who founded a company called Glossier that is revolutionizing the makeup and cosmetics industry, putting Sephora to shame. Tony Hsu in the middle, DoorDash, competing in many markets and having larger market share with his company DoorDash than Uber Eats. You would see other, company, other entrepreneurs like Susan Tynan with Framebridge, who's disrupting an age-old industry of framing your pictures and paintings. You're leveraging technology to make it easier for the end consumer. You have Morgan de Baum with Blavity, a media company specifically focusing on black millennials. And you would have Naveen, I always get his name wrong, uh, Naveen Savaldurai, who co-founded Foursquare, social media and location application uh, that exited for quite a bit of money recently. So my first prediction is that when you think about the future of startups and the future of entrepreneurs, we're going to see increasing diversity. And there's reasons for that that I'll get to later. Second prediction. The future of startups are going to be increasingly global. And we see that locally in Fredericton. Again, very, very small consumer market. Very much like Aruba. It's only 100,000 odd people that you have as potential customers. So that means that if we are to be economically prosperous, we need more companies exporting at an earlier stage. And often when we talk about exports, we think, okay, do your startup thing first, then get profitable in your local economy, and then start thinking about exporting. It can't work that way anymore. Your competition and your customers are worldwide. And the good news is that with technology, you are more easily able to reach them and to compete against them and have the knowledge to do that and the communication channels to do that than ever before. So increasingly global at an earlier stage, that would be my second prediction for the future of startups. And I think a really necessary one for our own economic survival as small markets who are doing big things. Third prediction. Anybody following the uh, WeWork story? Show of hands. Anybody following that story? What's going on with WeWork? I saw a hand in the back. Yell it out. Don't be shy. Ruin their IPO. Why do you think that is? It's because they didn't have a proven, profitable, economic model before they went in search of ever more capital to fund their operations. Third prediction is that just the topic that was being discussed earlier, sales, that has to be becoming more increasingly important when we talk about the future of startups. For a period of about 10 to 15 years, We've seen what, in my opinion, has been a bubble in the capital markets and in private investments that's been led by our friends on the West Coast in the United States, where startups that are 
well before they even have revenue, before they even have a proven profitable economic model established, are getting massive sums of investment from private investors. And then when they run out of that cash and they're looking to continually fund growth at all costs, they're going to the public markets through IPOs. And I think the WeWork example is the first of many to come. The public markets are finally catching up and saying, hold on, you valued yourself at, I think it was $48 billion through rounds of private investment. This is for WeWork. But when you look at their economic model, taking long-term lease agreements, 25 years, sometimes more, but short-term revenue generating options, long-term liabilities, short-term assets. You can say you are innovative until the cows come home, but that's your basic model. And you haven't proven that you're a $50 billion valued company. So I'd say this same theory of the case is going to be true for all startups. That you need to prove through your sales that you are worth what you say you're worth. The market is never wrong. And so I think the third prediction is that startups are going to have to become increasingly lean. They're going to have to be increasingly focused on revenue generation over raising capital. And that's going to be important in every single sector. Fourth prediction is that entrepreneurship is not going to be exclusive to company founders. The future of startups is that it'll be democratized by necessity to each and every one of us and no matter what career path we choose to pursue. And this is because of the rapid disruption that is taking place through technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning that are going to and are today disrupting hundreds of thousands of jobs around North America and the world. There's a study that came out recently focused on the Canadian market. The Canadian market has somewhere between 17 and 21 million people in the labor force. And this study by a national organization predicted that over 50% of the jobs in our national labor force are going to be disrupted or completely eliminated within the next 10 years. We have not seen a disruption of the labor force at this scale since the Industrial Revolution. And so when we start to think about where are people going to work, how are we going to make a living for our families, and what are the skill sets that cannot currently be replaced by the technology that is causing this disruption, well, those skill sets line up with the skill sets that make a good entrepreneur. Their skill sets or traits like judgment, like collaboration and team dynamics, and skill sets like being able to see an idea that doesn't necessarily follow into the patterns that exist in the current models. So when we think about the future, I think it will be increasingly necessary through our educational institutions and through not-for-profits that are working with young people to develop their skill sets, that those skill sets become the basis of not only our educational systems, but of every employer who wants to see their team successful and growing and not necessarily replaced by the technologies that are disrupting it. And if we do that, then you are going to increasingly see people in career paths that we didn't think of as startups or as entrepreneurs, like the legal profession, like medicine, that are going to be more entrepreneurial by necessity, by survival. So that's the fourth prediction is that <clears throat> for the future of startups, 
more and more and more of us are going to be independently owned startups and as we take on and implement those skill sets as entrepreneurs. So when we think about the future of startups, I would posit increasingly diverse, increasingly global, increasingly lean and focused on sales over investment, and startups as increasingly accessible as our labor force changes. What is causing all of these? Well, tech is the driver. For diversity, more than ever before, you can form connections through online platforms that prevented or were barriers for minority groups in the past. There's also an accessibility of knowledge. We can Google anything to be able to do our market research, understand our competition, understand our customers, connect with them. That levels the playing field for everyone. Increasingly global, we talked about that. You know, I know there are heads of government who will talk increasingly about protectionism, about not accepting immigration. That is very backward looking. We've already reached the point where we know we are in a globalized economy. And that is primarily through technology not necessarily through trade policy. So it doesn't matter how many walls are put up, technology goes above it all. And we are going to see, again, especially for small consumer markets, the necessity of having increasing global competitiveness focus within our startups. Increasingly lean, it's more transparent for investors to understand the value of a company and are you who you say you are? And if you don't have the proven economic model, that can be flagged very early on. So increasingly lean, increasingly sales focused. And again, the technology is causing that disruption in the labor force, but through technology, through the knowledge sharing, through skills training, we will see increasing accessibility of the entrepreneurial skills that will enable us in any career path to develop our own startups. But that future is not guaranteed. I think that for us as global citizens, if that's a future that we would like to have realized, there are a few things that we can do to take matters into our own hands to ensure that we see that future come to fruition. One is making sure that skills training, the entrepreneurial skills, some of which I talked about, many more you as entrepreneurs know well, has to be ingrained in the employees that are working for the startups that we own. We need to work with leaders in nonprofit, education, whether it is primary, secondary, post-secondary, to ensure those skill sets are understood and that there are opportunities for students to develop work on them and see them through to fruition. And skills training is number one that we need to do. Number two, for anyone who is engaged as an entrepreneur is Paint it forward. I think it is really important that if you've reached a level of success, you give back to the community and help lift others up by being a mentor, by opening up your human network so that it can be leveraged by future entrepreneurs, and that you are thinking about your community and seeing more people at that table. And finally, as global citizens, we can push for important legislation that will establish the rules of the road for startups and entrepreneurship going forward. Two, I'm sure if you're in technology, you may compete with large, large businesses. So antitrust legislation is a big one. 
And I think as well to ensure that we have more opportunities for economic value is having citizen owned data legislation. So that's what the future of startups could look like. I hope that you'll join me in pushing for that vision to come to fruition. I thank you very much for having me and I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the talks and engaging with each of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.